Now that you've learned how to write an introductory paragraph for a rhetorical analysis essay, also known as a PFS, we need to look at how to write body paragraphs. So we'll write uh, um, body paragraphs over the plastic pink flamingo piece. And I'm going to walk you through a little formula to help you do that. So right here you'll see that we have um, this statement in her essay, The Plastic Pink Flamingo, A Natural History, Jennifer Price asserts that Americans in the 1950s were too preoccupied with material things by showcasing the increasing economic well-being of Americans during this time period and by, and that's where you'll fill in the blank. So here we have this one little section here um, talking about one of the purposes. She does, she she asserts that Americans were too preoccupied with material things by showcasing increasing economic well-being of Americans during this time period. So the topic for your body paragraph one refers to increasing economic well-being of Americans. Okay. This one's going to be the example for you as you write and then you'll write your other one over here. So here are some of the strategies that we're going to mention in this body paragraph about increasing economic well-being of Americans. So she mentions the Grand Flamingo Hotel and the development of other more modest hotels as well as the expansion of new train lines that made travel possible for an eager middle class. Also there are some um, categories of diction, nouns, verbs, adjectives contribute to a sense of flashiness like splash, flocking, grand, eager, new, playful, art deco style, and bright. So these are categories of diction that, you, that sh we can talk about and um, this other kind of diction over here. So. Let's talk about organizing the essay. So for your timed writing, you'll need to consider a structured outline that includes an intro, which is your PFS, at least two body paragraphs, and a conclusion or concluding statement. Body paragraphs can be arranged by purpose or device. As a general rule, those essays organized by purpose are more successful at keeping the big question of focus. Using the, the divisions you created above in the note-taking step, organize your examples accordingly. So. Right here you'll see there are two ways that you could do this. You could organize your essay by purpose or organize it by device. And you'll see the difference here is in these two body paragraphs. So in this one, you'll talk about purpose number one and a device that has to do with purpose number one and another device that has to do with purpose number one. Then purpose number two, you'll talk about a device and another device for purpose number two. The other way you could do it is you could talk about one kind of device like um, diction, uh, a category of diction, or an illusion, or something like that. And um, an example of it to connect it to the purpose, an example to connect it to the purpose, and then pick a different kind of device and do the same thing. It just depends on the kind of thing that you want to focus on where you feel strongest. So let's scroll down here. We're going to practice connecting device to meaning, D2M, and I'm introducing a new concept to you called quotation sandwiches quote Sammy's. We want to avoid doing what's called a hit and run quotation, which is like just writing something and then lobbing a quote in there and saying it's all good. Okay. So because quotations do not speak for themselves, you need to build a frame around them in which you do the speaking for them. Quotations inserted into the text without such a frame may be called hit and run quotations, likening them to car accidents in which the driver speeds away and avoids taking responsibility for the damage. So here's an example of a hit and run quotation that you want to avoid. Patrick Henry reveals to his audience that they are placing their hopes of an illusion of goodwill by the British. And here's a quote lobbed in there. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth and listen to the song of of that siren till she transforms us into beasts." End quote. This quote shows us that they have failed in their attempts at securing peace and liberty. That isn't good analysis and it's a hit and run quotation. You're just lobbing a long quote in here in the middle and calling it good. So to frame this quotation adequately you need to insert it into what we like to call a quotation sandwich with a statement introducing it serving as the top slice of bread and the explanation following it as the bottom slice. The introduction or lead-in should explain who is speaking and set up what the quotation says. The following, the, the follow-up statements should explain why the quotation illustrates the character's claim. So here's an example of a quotation sandwich, aka this is how you should write it. Here's our top slice. Henry reveals to his audience that they are placing their hopes of an illusion of goodwill falsely communicated by the British. And here's your little quote 
inset. Notice that this isn't a full quote. You're not doing a whole sentence like up here. Avoid doing this. Instead, you're weaving quote like quotes and pieces of quotes into your own commentary. Okay. He alludes to the Song of that Siren, a reference to the irresistible but daunting creatures in the Odyssey with the ability to transform men into beasts in order to characterize the British promises as ultimately dangerous to American freedom. That is how you successfully weave in quotes into this piece. Okay, <clears throat> here's your bottom slice. Through this reference, the reader connects the former promises of liberty made by the British diplomats to the alluring but lethal siren song and can more fully understand Henry's purpose to reveal it to his audience that in the past they have either been blind or have ignored the truth that the British ministry does not have British interests at heart. This bottom slice is your significance portion. It is the part where you are showing me, not telling me, you're showing me the connection between um, the device and what it does. So uh, the device and the meaning, okay? The reader connects the former promises. Okay, we're talking about um, this illusion. Okay, that's connecting a former promise of liberty, um, and you're connecting it back to the meaning. Okay, um, to reveal to his audience that in the past they have either been blind or have ignored the truth that the British ministry does not. Blah blah blah. Okay, that's a good quotation sandwich or quote Sammy. So let's talk about the body paragraphs. So once you've had your, you have your well-written thesis, which is your PFS, and notes of your outline, which you can decide to organize it by purpose or by device, you can begin to write your body paragraphs. Here's an example for you. It's in a table format, but this is basically all the parts that you'll need for body paragraph. So right here, you'll have a topic sentence where you reference devices and you reference to the topic of this body paragraph. For example, to convince his reluctant audience to see his point of view, Patrick Henry, through a poignant allusion to, and recurring references to false and misguided hope, first reminds the country's leaders that their attempts at reconciliation and diplomacy for the past 10 years have not achieved their goal of securing peace and liberty for America. Okay. It refers to the devices here. Through a poignant allusion and recurring references to false and misguided hope. Because it's in the topic sentence, I should expect to see that in the, body, the rest of the body paragraph. And then you also need to have your meaning in here to remind the country's leaders, blah, blah, blah. This whole part is the meaning. So I'm going to be looking for that as well and connections to the, making the connection between the two. So you'll have two quotation sandwiches in there in a concluding sentence. So this one is a discussion of a device so introduce the context, weave your short phrases, not whole long quotations from the text with grammatical fluency and explain the examples connecting them to purpose. So this one's the, so this one's the top slice. Here's the middle of the sandwich and that one's the bottom slice. Okay. The bottom slice is important because that's where you are explaining and making commentary and connecting these. Henry reveals to his audience that they are placing their hopes on an illusion of goodwill falsely communicated by the British. Okay, that's the context of the example. He alludes to, here we go, we're weaving short phrases from the text with grammatical fluency. He alludes to the song of that siren, a reference to irresistible but daunting creatures in the Odyssey with the ability to transform men into beasts in order to characterize the British and their promises as ultimately dangerous to America's quest for freedom. There's your middle part. Here we go, bottom slice. Let's see how we connect device to meaning. Through this reference, the reader connects the former promises of liberty made by the British diplomats to the alluring but lethal siren song and can more fully understand Henry's purpose to reveal to his audience that in the past they have either been blind or have ignored the truth that the British do not have American interests at heart. That's one quota quotation sandwich. Then you can transition and discuss, oops, <laughs> discuss device number two the same way. So, Additionally, there's a transition telling me they're going to another quotation sandwich. Here's our top slice, giving context. Henry's recurring images of lost hope confront the gentleman with the delusion that this time the result may be different in their negotiations with the British. Here's our middle. Henry began by conceding that this is natural to man to indulge in the illusions of hope 
and then as he continues to justify those hopes in order to justify his own actions. Okay, there's your middle part. That's grammatically weird, but oh well. In this conclusion, however, Henry urges his audience to discontinue the chase for the elusive phantom of hope at a time when there is no room for hope. Okay, that's still quoting. Repeating these images emphasizes the past misjudgment of the American leaders in dealing with the British ministry's promise for American freedom. Then have a concluding sentence where you refer back to your topic and bridge to the next paragraph. Henry's emphasis on the mistakes of the past ultimately serves to force his audience to see the truth and prepare them for his message that they need to change their methods from diplomacy to action. This shows me that this writer knows the meaning of this piece. They need to change their methods from diplomacy to action. Okay, that's a really good body paragraph. So again, you'll have your topic area, a quote Sammy, a quote Sammy. These were taught, these, this was organized by device. So, um, or this is organized by um, purpose. Um, so this is purpose number one paragraph and they use two devices here. So I'm going to assume that the next body paragraph will be purpose number two and um, using two devices to connect to it. So your assignment will be to write a body paragraph. So you might choose to organize by purpose. Therefore, you need to divide your purpose statement into two solid topic sentences, um, one for each body paragraph. After the topic sentence, you should have two quote Sammies, each containing an example of a rhetorical device, evidence from the passage, and discussion or analysis of that example relating it to the author's purpose. The paragraph should end with a concluding statement referring back to the topic sentence of the paragraph. Okay, so you'll write a thesis and do all this. You'll underline and um, mark up your stuff so that you know you got all the elements. While we're in here, here are some resources for rhetorical analysis. This is a really great list. Some verbs to use instead of exemplifies because that can get overused a lot. So take a glance at this list and try to use some of these words instead. Uh, I've also included some transition words here to help you transition from one quote CME to another. And then without, this is a verbs that suggest rhetorical method without blueprinting devices. In other words, if you get tired of saying like, the author uses juxtaposition, you can just say the author juxtaposes these ideas. Okay. So there's space here for you to write your PFS and then body paragraphs can be written just like they were in the example. You have um, these notes over here to help guide you. Body paragraph one and two.